Hello everybody, my name is Will, and welcome back to Flyout. Now my voice is very much giving up on me at this point in time, because I have been basically talking all day, and I'm not made for this. You might think, hey, you do a YouTube channel where most you do is talk over games, and yes, I do, but look, my voice is weak like I am. I'm a little coward, and um, uh... Uh, yeah, I mean, that pretty much sums up that entire conversation topic. Onwards, we'll move on to the next conversation topic. What are we doing today? We're building a biplane, specifically a World War One biplane, because they're cool, aren't they? I mean, they're, they're not, like, good, they're slow, they barely worked, and you couldn't really dogfight in them, and putting anything more than, like, a single machine gun on them would make them fall out of the sky with weight, but, uh, I mean, they're cool. And that's all that matters, right? So we're going to be working in the in the fields of leather and woodworking today because that's what this plane would be made out of: fabric, wood, leather. Hmm. Yes. Anyway, uh, so today, well, <laughs> yeah, we're building this biplane, uh, and uh, it's going to be marvelous. It's going to have absolutely no horsepower. It's going to glide incredibly well because it's basically going to have infinite amounts of lift compared to its weight because it's made out of fabric and sticks and uh, it's got a couple of weak machine guns because hey you don't need anything else in World War One. Uh, the planes were made out of fire and people mostly. Um, <laughs> So this technically has a slightly smaller wing uh, at the bottom than it does a top, which I think makes it a special type of biplane. There's a name for them, I can't remember it. I knew it at one point, but uh, oh well, who cares. Um, <laughs> there's some people who I'm sure will know. They'll put it in the comments. There you go, look at me. I'm, I, I don't, I'm not an educational YouTuber. I'm just here doing these weird things and praying. Uh, <laughs> um... What was I on the topic of? World War One biplanes. Yes, I. Sorry. If okay. If you're not familiar with this channel, this is what happens. I start doing a couple of videos, and I've got great talking points for a few videos, and then eventually I run out, and things start degrading and degrading and degrading until these like segments where I'm doing the building bit just become the weirdest conversations that we're ever gonna have, and that's great. I I personally appreciate that. I know a few people don't. I've had a few comments telling me just talk about the damn plane <laughs> you idiot um but hey you know what i like it here this is fun <laughs> it gives me an opportunity to just clear my head a little bit i've just spent the last two and a half hours building a biplane and i'm losing it a little bit i can't imagine how the people who actually had to design these things in real life felt can you imagine how long that took and how difficult it was god i don't want to sign up to that i'd much rather do it in a video game where things are done for me and i can just set some values on a slider man oh god and like i don't have to worry about like if it, if, if i build a really unstable aircraft and it crashes i don't kill anyone that's beneficial i don't fancy killing anyone at the moment um Oh, that come that came out very, way more ominous than I intended it to be. I I'm not gonna kill anyone, I swear. Right. Anyway, before I incriminate myself in any more crimes, I should probably return to the gameplay segment because the plane's about built. Uh, that got strange. <laughs> And here we have our little biplanes. So this thing obviously is meant to look a little bit like one of the World War I warbirds. Uh, now, we are going to have to do some tweaking to this engine. I've not set this up yet, but propellers are complicated, and I'm sure a few of you are interested in how they work. So I figured I may as well be with you while I do that so that we can uh, show you a couple of the settings we're using. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to work out uh, if this is an acceptable amount of power. So I'm just going to look up the engine that, let's say, uh, I don't know, a sop with Camel used, uh, just as a fairly standard uh, marker for where we want to be-ish. <laughs> Okay, so we've got something going on here. We've got about 162 kilowatts of power. Now, compared to the engine I'm looking at, which is the Klerg at 9B, we actually have about 60 kilowatts more power than they do. Uh, but I imagine that my plane is a little bit bigger and heavier, so probably necessary. Uh, also, our, our friend, I think he's called Jimmy here, 
is maybe sat a little high in there. So we'll just uh, <laughs> we'll just move the whole plane around him rather than moving him because that's how this works in this game. <laughs> um, so what we need to do is we need to now find the ideal RPM on this blade. So we have it set to target RPM at the moment. We're going to turn that off. Uh, now this won't be very good for flying, but it's going to be useful for us finding a perfect speed for this propeller to spin at. So what we're going to do is make a massive fuel tank under this thing. And we've done this before. We did this in the Heavy Fighter video, but this was a tip I was given in the Discord and I plan on using it again because it's a great tip. Um, oh, goodness me, that's gone... Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Basically, what we want this to do is to stop us from moving under any circumstances. No matter how much power we produce from this damn propeller, which, let's be honest, it's not going to be a lot, we want to see, hey, is this thing going to move? No? Good. Okay. <laughs> and then we can get an idea of what RPM is our peak. And, uh, frankly, this gear ratio, probably not going to cut the mustard. I'm going to go down to a 2... Uh, and probably hope that that is good enough. <laughs> Let's see what kind of power we're making. It's not going to be a lot. Okay, so now we're here. We want to go to our prop. We want to right-click it and have a look at that thrust. Now, we can adjust our RPM by adjusting the propeller pitch with 3 and 4. And as you can see, as we go, we're kind of reaching different levels of thrust at different RPMs. Now, I've just thought, I've not adjusted the angles of this prop at all, so that's actually going to be a huge problem. <laughs> okay, so we want to adjust the angles of this blade just a tad. Um, that might be a little bit too much for an engine with this little power. Let's just you know, take that down a little bit and uh, see if that's any better better uh, and i'm gonna also change uh, i mean let, let's change the gearbox as well and then we might get an idea of which way we need to go i don't really know too much about this to be honest i'm just kind of throwing things at the wall until some of it sticks <laughs> okay there we go got the propeller uh spinning and i think oh goodness me okay 3.4-ish, 3.3-ish at 800. Um, what kind of... Uh, we're getting a lot of pre-ignition, actually. That's not great. Okay, I can adjust that. Okay, right. Uh, I've changed the engine up a bit, so we shouldn't... Oh, we're still pre-igniting by, like, 22%. That is a failure if I've ever seen one. <laughs> I don't think that's changed at all. Okay, interesting. Uh, getting a little bit more out of it, though, it looks like. So, yeah, take the small victories. <laughs> okay, so I found a target RPM of 940 that seems to work somewhat. Uh, and I've ignited... And I have removed the pre-ignition, so hopefully now we have some speed in this thing. And I do have one more plan just before we finish this thing up, which may end up being a lot of work. <laughs> okay, we're rolling. Um, we're not making a lot of thrust here. <laughs> I must admit, um, we will have to try something else, I'm thinking. This is not going according to plan. Uh, okay, right. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Bear with me. <laughs> okay, we have done some weight reduction. We've done some tweaking. These are now my blade twist settings 2580 don't know if it's perfect target rpm i got to 1400 and i've made my skin thickness on the actual fuselage a lot thinner so it weighs a lot less now <laughs> so here we go can we achieve flight i mean it's never going to be quick uh, and my control surfaces are slightly the wrong way uh oh oh god oh god 
Uh, ooh. Uh, yep, there we go. Okay. And uh, if I just... Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. I mean, we're barely flying. But we are flying um, at the end of the day. That is... <laughs> it's basically lighter than air flight at this point in time. Good God. Um, right, so roll is backwards and yaw is backwards, but pitch isn't. So there we go, we got one of them right. Um, and, uh, well, I mean, she flies. That's for sure. Uh, how fast did the sop with camel even go? I mean, let's use that as a fairly standard comparison point, I guess. It went 182 kilometers an hour max. <laughs> and we are going 170. Um, honestly, that's kind of okay, really, isn't it? That's not too bad. I mean, we need to work on the old uh, settings a little bit so that we have a bit more in the way of um, go. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, roll rate is not good, and the rudder is very effective, but also going the wrong way. So we need to work on that, but we're, we're getting there. Okay, right. And now, a little bit more on the old uh, ailerons, which in reality we probably shouldn't really have. I'm pretty sure this era of biplanes use wing flexing, where they just bent the entire wing in order to get roll. So, that's not realistic, but you know what? Honestly, uh, I'm impressed that this thing is flying at all. <laughs> so, let's not look a gift horse in the mouth at the moment, and instead, let's appreciate that we are currently flying at sub 100 kilometers an hour. I mean, not anymore. Uh, the wind is making the tail really flare outwards here, but um, that's okay. <laughs> We don't need to fly in a straight line, we're flying at all, which is a miracle in itself. Okay, let's get ourselves a little bit of a tailwind here, and maybe we can uh, get some speed going. <laughs> here we go, flying with the wind, that's, that's what it's all about. <laughs> ah, I see a problem. Okay, our uh, internal wingtip twist is actually producing negative thrust. You can see there, minus seven degrees. So we actually need to increase the angle on that, and then we will go a little bit quicker. Okay, so we've got a couple of machine guns up on the wings, and I have noticed they are actually uh, behind the propellers, which is awkward, uh, because they would probably shoot these propellers to bits, but oh well. Uh, there you go. Guns. Uh, we've not fixed the steering. <laughs> Um, these wheels can't steer because they're not actually the landing gear, they are just wheels. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what to do about that. I could put it on a joint, uh, but, uh, yeah, that feels a little bit janky. I mean, this whole thing feels a little bit janky, but it is a World War One biplane, so I feel like that is kind of the vibe of uh, World War One. is everything was a little bit janky. <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't think we're going to be attaching missiles to this and shooting down any uh, target drones today because I genuinely think this wouldn't take off if we tried. <laughs> as funny as it would be to put a missile on this thing, I don't think it's going to be very practical. <laughs> but there you go. You know what? You could prove me wrong. Maybe if I see a couple of uh, 100 kilowatt powered uh, biplanes with AIM-9 strapped to the bottom of their wings, I will be proven wrong. But... Uh, Oh, I've got to do it now, don't I? Yep, that's fine. That's fine. It's in the ground, but that's fine. <laughs> no problem. No problem at all. We'll just take off with this thing on, and then uh, we'll we'll just catch up with and kill a target drone. Simple as. No problem at all. I think. Maybe. Uh, let's get that tail wheel off the ground. Oh, God. Come on. Here we go. Get some speed built up. We need about probably 90 to 100 kilometers an hour here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, 90. Here we go. We're off. We're off. <laughs> let's build some altitude. We're going to need it. Uh, it's going to take a little while to climb. We are 
unbelievably slow. <laughs> but we do have one aim nine. Um, now I need to get enough altitude where we might be able to actually dive on this target drone because we're not going to catch up to it. <laughs> Okay, it takes a million years to actually get any speed in this thing whatsoever, so it's going to be a matter of pray that the target drone gets close to us, I think. Uh, and it might just cross in front of us here. Uh, it's going to be a tough shot, but if we can just get a lock, fire it! <laughs> there it goes! Come on! Come on, you can do it! Can I follow it? I think there is a button to follow it. I don't know it! No, it looks low. It looks really low. It looks like it's missed. Oh, God, no. What's happening? <laughs> I think it's missed. Oh, no. Oh, what a, what a disaster. <laughs> that was the only one we had. Oh, man. <laughs> now we got to go back to base and gain this 300 meters of altitude that unironically took me 10 minutes to gain. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> well, let's go in for a landing. And uh, then we will uh, call it a day, I reckon. Because that is uh, enough depression for one weekend. <laughs> okay. We give her a couple of beans as we come in to land so we don't stall. Not that stalling is a particularly easy thing to do in an aircraft such as this. Line up for the runway, which is looking much more modern than the ones that this would have actually landed on. And, ooh, with a little bit of tailoring for the old wind direction, we need to just lower the throttle, flare her up, and touch her down, and hit our brakes. Aha! Perfect landing! There we go, that's probably the first one we've actually done. It might help that on this aircraft I've actually put brakes on the thing, but you know what? Um, that's fine. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this one, please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe, and I really hope that I can see you in the future when I do some more slightly ridiculous things a little bit like this one. But for now, I will see you in the future. Goodbye! I'm trying to get first person. Oh, oh there we go! <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> and as always, a huge thank you to this channel's patrons Badger Burn and Potato, CamJam135, Cody N, DJ Pete, Gavoon, Gunmaster929, Sad Cat, Just Casualty621, Last at 11 Mark Model Invested, Nicholas K, Rolls, Sos Bakken, Ryan Brody, The Kinesian Emperor, Zara Shine, and Zite Wolverine. Thank you very much for your support, and I'm gonna go give my voice a rest. <sighs>